Hi everybody, I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to show you and create together a lab that will cover the most important things in the CICD pipeline. And the first thing we will start with is we will create our VPC, then create our availability zones, our subnets, then our EC2 instance, that we will use either in Ansible or in our Kubernetes cluster. Then we will use another instance called the Bastion that we will use it to interact with our instance that reside in our private network. We use this method so to, to keep our master node and Ansible node very safe. The, 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 best, the Bastion is for the security reason we will cover as well another thing is how to 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 use aws could be plane aws could build and aws could build and how we will merge all of them to create our cicd pipeline i will show you how you can create your how you create your repository on, on your github and how you link that with aws Code pipeline, you build your artifacts and how you send it to the to S3 bucket, then how this S3 bucket push them or is pulled by the AWS code deploy that will deploy them on the, the target group or on the deployment group that in our case is Ansible. So let us go to my AWS account and show you how these things are work under the hood. So first thing that I will do is I'm going to my AWS account, then create a VPC. Make sure in, in this lab we will work in the organ region. So make sure that all resource or all the services that we will use in this lab, either AWS could be applied, AWS could build our bucket name or our S3 bucket, our AWS could, could deploy must reside in the same region otherwise you will face an issues because when you create an AWS service for example in Paris and you create another service in Oregon so when you go to the, when you will create your AWS code pipeline in Oregon you will you will use both AWS code build and AWS code deploy and when this as long as this AWS code pipeline is reside in Oregon when we will look for an AWS could build project, we will not find it because it is we have created in Paris in uh, wrongly. So make sure that all the services reside in the same region. In our case, in Oregon region. So first thing that we are going to do is to create our VPC. So go to the AWS Management Console, then create click on VPC. Once you create a once you create an AWS account in any region, a VPC is created by default. But in our lab, we will create our VPC, we will define our CIDR, we will define our subnet CIDRs, etc. So stay with me, I will walk you through all the steps and show you how these things are working. So we'll click on your VPC, then create a VPC. I will call it my VPC. Then for the CIDR, I will go with 10.10.0.0 .10 and here slash 16. This 16 means that the portion of the, of the network is 16 bits, right? And the rest of 16 bits is for the, for the host ID, right? So here, this 16 means that the 10.10 .10 is for the network. And then the 0.0, .0 is for the host ID. Nice. Then click on create VPC. Next step is that we have to define our VPC, our subnets, right? And the subnets are reside within an availability zones. And each region has a different number of availability zones. For example, in the organ, there are four availability zones. And maybe for in the in the Paris, maybe there is there is only two availability zones. In general, 
there is the AWS account, then there is there is the region. In our case, is the organ region. Then there is the VPC, is a virtual private cloud. Then within it we have availability zones, and within it we have subnets. I will go here to subnet, click on subnet, then create subnet. It must choose the VPC. This one is different, and this one is I have just created earlier. Then go down here, and for subnet, I call it public subnet one. Then for the available, as I told you, there are four availability zones, right? So I choose the first one, and for the cider, I have already my my VPC cider. Then here I will type one then 0 then 24 in this subnet i have specified that for the portion network id we have 24 bits and we, uh, we see, uh, there still remain only 8 8 bits for the host id then i will go down here then i will create subnet i will create another subnet In our my VPC and then public and do I will want it to be in the in the second availability zone and it will have cider two dot zero twenty four. Right, I called public subnet two. Now I will create private subnets. So I will choose my VPC and I will call this one private subnet one first availability zone. Then slider will be 3.024 and then create subnet. They will create another subnet, private subnet, choose my VPC, then private subnet 2. Then the availability zone will be the second availability zone, and for the slider will be dot four dot zero twenty-four right then create subnet right now we have two public subnets and two private subnets the public subnets the only subnets that want them to access to the internet and the internet access to them but for the private networks we will, we want we, w we don't want to publish them to the network. It will be accessible only from within the VPC. So only the instance that are in the, the public or either or in the private subnet that can reside to another instance that is in the other private subnet. I hope that is clear. Next step is to create root tables. In the root tables we will filter the subnets so we will have root tables for the public subnets and the root table for the private subnets then for this root tables we will have we will have a path and we will specify the gateway to the subnet to reach the internet we'll see this in the in the next in the next steps so create root table route or route table so I call it my public public route table then I choose VPC then I create a route table I will create another one and they will call it private private route 